one match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. Three sixteen left to go in this ball game. I formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's gonna run this to the five, 10, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow, he was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from he Dion. He took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just, <laughs> holy cow! Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two, get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right, gets away from two sacks. Dons win, sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion, pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is on. It is a rainy night here in the Naugatuck Valley as Play On Sports presents exclusive coverage of high school football. A Naugatuck Valley League matchup tonight. The Derby Red Raiders at 4-1 and one take on the undefeated Wolcott Eagles at 5-0. and oh. Hi again, everyone. John Versteeg alongside Leo Bowler. And Leo, you know what? For a Derby and the Naugatuck Valley League, the theme this year has been sophomore quarterbacks, and Sonia's got one, and Derby's got a pretty good one in Michael Krieger. That they do, John. He is 35 for 62 for 487 yards on the season. He's got seven touchdowns, been picked twice. They also have a pretty good rusher in Tyree Small. He's a junior. He's carried the ball 48 times for 336 yards, about a seven-yard average for Small. Krieger also has two favorite targets to throw to. He's got senior Dylan McMahon and junior Sal Forsen. Both of them have 10 catches. On the defensive side of the ball for Derby, keep an eye on Matt Nicolari. He's got 41 tackles, averaging almost eight a game. And for Walcott High School, their quarterback got a familiar last name in Nickel. His older brother Kevin was here two years ago. Mike Nichols, a pretty good quarterback in his own right. That he is. He is six foot, 170 pounds. He's a senior that's thrown the ball 72 times. He's got 42 completions, 693 yards, and he's thrown nine touchdowns. Only been picked three times. The other running back, uh, running back to keep your eye on uh, as well, because Nickel will carry the football as well. 71 rushes for 588 yards, John. The running back to keep your eye on is junior Joe Lynch. 475 yards for uh, 47 carries, and wideout Jason Pelletier, 11 catches. But Matt Sears' record needs uh, to be mentioned. He's got nine catches on the season. Five of those, John, are for touchdowns. Can't get much more efficient than that. It's Derby and Walcott will have the opening kick. The first quarter is next, but first this time out on PlayOnSports.com.
And we are back here at Wolcott High School. John Versteeg and Leo Bowler as we get set for the opening kickoff between Derby and Wolcott, two teams that are pretty familiar with one another here in the NVL. That they are, John. They also have a common opponent. While we're waiting to get ready here to kick off, I'll let you know that that was Wilby. Wolcott beat them 53-6, to and Derby also put up 53 points in a 53-14 win over Wilby. Not sure if that's going to have much bearing on what goes on here tonight, but that is the only common opponent here in uh, the NVL. Very, very competitive league. Been wild and wacky this year. Torrington beating defending Class S state champion Holy Cross. And some wind and some rain as Joe Keeley is set to kick it off for Walcott High School back deep to receive for Derby and the Red Raiders. It's Dylan McMahon. And we are set to go as the right foot put into it. It's taken at the goal line and rolls all the way into the end zone, sailing over the head of Dylan McMahon for the touchback and Derby to start on the 20-yard line, first and 10. That's a great weapon to have when you can have a high school kicker who can put the ball in the end zone and force the opponent to go 80 yards, and that's exactly what Wolcott has been able to do. Derby with a big field ahead of him, John. And so for the... Red Raiders, the sophomore quarterback, Michael Krieger, again, 35 of 62, 476 yards and seven touchdowns. They spread it out, four wideouts out of the shotgun on first down, a high snap, throw to the right, catch made, running forward across the 20, up to the 22-yard line, Dylan McMahon with the catch. And second and long for Derby here in the early going. Nice job there defensively for the Wolcott Eagles, stretching that play out and keeping that just a two-yard gain and also keeping the uh, back in bounds. Keeps the clock moving early in the game, but nice defensive play. So second down, and again, trips to the near side left on first down with the rain moving from left to right. The give on the handoff. The, hail, the tailback, Tyree Small, a gain of about two on the play, third and around seven to go, and an obvious passing play for Derby. Small has had a good year so far, John. He's got 336 yards on 48 carries, averaging seven yards a carry on the season. Lost a yard on that play, and uh, long third down here for Derby. Yeah, they spotted just about at the original line of scrimmage. On the near side left for the hash mark, again out of the gun, calling signals for Krieger. Trips to the far side right. Krieger, pocket collapsing, and he's taken down. In the backfield, a loss of five on the play. And Walcott's going to have tremendous field position at midfield, if not inside the Derby territory, as they start off the offense. And Krieger that time tried to roll to his right to get some space to release the football, but at that point, the coverage downfield was very solid, very tight on all the receivers. So the punt from the end zone, McMahon lets it go. It takes a derby bounce back to the 44-yard line where a slew of Red Raiders down it. And again, Walcott now with the rain at their backs moving from left to right with 10.08 to go in the scoreless ball game here in the first quarter. These two teams in the haberdashery report both are wearing red. You got all red for the home team, Walcott Eagles, and the Derby Red Raiders wearing the white tops, red helmets, and red pants. And uh, I know it's tough to see right now, impossible to see. We're still working on the video, but a left to right missed. Blowing across the field. It's not that heavy. We're on the field about a half hour or so before the game. As out of the shotgun on first down, the inside handoff goes across the 40 up to the 36-yard line. Joe Lynch, the tailback, gets the nice run of about eight yards on the play. Good job blocking on the right side of that offensive line for the Wolcott Eagles led by right tackle Tom Longo. He's a uh, junior, six foot, 230 pounds. A big man over there opening up some holes there for Lynch. Second and three with 9.35 to go. The rain necessitating that both teams keep it on the ground here in the early going. The sweep to the left, Lynch around the end across the, th the 20, inside the 20 to about the 16 yard line. First down. 
for Wolcott. Great lead block that time by Blaze Williams, who was out in front of Lynch. He kicked that defensive end out and opened up a nice hole for Lynch to turn the corner and get deep into Derby Red Raider territory. And now you can see those watching us, what we're working with, with the, the mist. And it is a heavy mist, best way to describe it, going from left to right across the field. The light's on here on this apocalyptic Friday night, rolling out to the right, going towards the end zone, incomplete. Nickel over through the intended receiver, Jay Pelletier, one of his favorite wideouts. And he was covered by Dylan McMahon, who actually was trailing Pelletier by a couple of steps, and uh, that does not bode well for the Derby Red Raiders. Their defense is going to have to be tight with the arm of Wolkett's quarterback. He's a very solid thrower in Mike Nickel. Averages about 138 yards in the air per game. Second and 10 from the 26-yard line. 9.03 to go. Trips to the near side right bottom of your screen. Again on the handoff going around the end. It's Lynch. And he's swarmed out of bounds. Up to about the original line. Second down and 10. Moves to third and 10. And they're going to try and go for the obvious pass. Maybe going towards the end zone at the 26. And interestingly, both of these teams have their quarterbacks playing on the defensive side of the football, which you don't see very often in high school football. And uh, much to the chagrin of most quarterbacks, they do like to play on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, you don't want to take a playoff when you're playing at the high school level, especially against a, a league opponent. Dropping back, throwing towards the end zone, incomplete. Overthrew Pelletier, but a flag flying around the 18-yard line. That flag in the area, John, where you see a lot of defensive holding called. It's uh, downfield quite a bit, and we'll wait for the referee's call, but uh, several things could have happened. Could have had a, a, a run, uh, excuse me, a lineman downfield as well. Ooh. So pass interference against Wolcott. So fourth down. And, John, that is one of the worst penalties that you can be assessed in high school football. You lose the 10 yards from the point of the previous down, and you lose the down. So it was third and about five. Now it becomes fourth and about a bus ticket. It's about 20 yards. Yeah, they spot it back at the 37-yard line. And waving the white flag on this drive, of course, Wolcott, nickel the punter, is set to put the right foot into it. And that's a beautiful end over end kick. And it falls out of bounds inside the five. And Derby pinned back with 8.44 to go in the score of this ballgame. You knew it was going to be low scoring with the weather conditions paramount here in this one. And if you could draw a punt the way you wanted it to be kicked and bounce out of bounds, that would be the punt you would use as the, and that was a perfect punt. That's the example. Bounced at the three and right out of bounds. Spotted at the three yard line on the far hash mark. That's where Krieger back to work. Again, out of the spread, but the handoff goes straight up the middle. The carry to Tyree Small. He's got four touchdowns this year for Derby. Gives him a little bit of breathing room, but not much. Up towards about the five-yard line. They call it second and five at the eight now. Clock running with 8.20 to go. Again, one back in the backfield and the give to Small, who bounces off left tackle close to that first down marker. Tom Longo, the defensive tackle for Wolcott, with the tackle there. And you're going to get a big dose early of Tyree Small here from Derby, but you will get the ball spread around quite a bit. In that win over Wolcott, they scored eight touchdowns. Six different players for Derby scored for them that night. So you'll see a lot of different players with the ball in their hands. Again, under center now is Krieger and movement on the line. The whistles blow the play dead. There's a lot of clapping going on in the white jerseys, and it will go against the Wolcott Eagles. So the first down, first first down of the night for Derby comes via the penalty. 
So gets him forward to the 12 yard line on the play. 7.30 to go, a scoreless ball game. We're here in the first quarter at Monroe Field in Wolcott. Glad to be with you here on this rainy Friday night. Lone setback as the, the carry straight up the middle. Again, Tyre Small with the tailback gets the call on that play. And before the game started, we spoke with Coach George French of the Derby Red Raiders, and he said that he felt this game was going to be won in the trenches. It's going to be won on the offensive and defensive line. And after the first drive, Derby looked like they were on the short end of that, but this drive very successful so far. So to the 21-yard line again, direct snap to Small, running right, and gets a few yards on the play up to the 23-yard line, a generous spot of about two, and brings up third and about four with 6.34 and counting. It's going to be a difficult fourth down, uh, third down conversion here with the way that this Wolcott defensive line is playing. There's not a big surge coming off of the Derby line so far in this game. They've had a pretty good drive so far. We'll see if they can move the ball here on third. And they spread it out again on third down and a long three. Whenever they've done that, at least here in the early going, first six minutes, it's been a run, and it is here. The snap directly to the quarterback, Krieger, and he picks up some positive yardage close to the first down. He's shown himself to be a threat to run. He has. He's had a very good year running the football. He's... Uh, close to the first down yardage, but he didn't make it, John. He's going to have a, a, a tough decision to make here to go for it on fourth with such good field position for Walken if you don't make it. And uh, Krieger has 588 yards uh, on the... Oh, excuse me, that's Nickel. I apologize. He has 487 yards in the air. Krieger uh, does carry the ball quite a bit. Out of the spread formation, John, it's a read formation. Uh, there's a lot of options being run. And what happens is Krieger will take the football, he'll put it in the belly of uh, Lynch, and he'll look at the defensive end. The defensive end attacks the running back. He'll pull it out of, out of Small's waist. He'll pull it out. He'll run the ball himself. If they stay outside, he'll give the ball to Small. So when you see a heavy dose of Smalls early, a lot of that is dictated by the way Wolcott's playing defense. They're going to attack the running back, or they're, they're going to keep the quarterback from getting outside. You're going to get the running back running inside. If they go to the attack, the running back, the quarterback will scamper outside. So we'll see a little mixed, uh, mixed bag here from the Derby offense. See if they spread it out on an obvious play. Going to go for it on fourth down and one. The power formation out of the shotgun. Nope. And now they go to... McMahon, and McMahon going to run for it, and it's close to the first down marker, but just a little bit short. Boy, it looked like McMahon was going to put the right foot into it and came very close to getting that first down. Now, Dylan McMahon with a rugby-style punting, uh, the way he takes the football and runs with it, he did it in his own end zone when he punted the first time, and he ran about four or five yards before he kicked it. That time, uh, no defender came up. He's committed to the run. And uh, it looks like he had enough yardage for the first down. Yes, he does. How about this, looking at the picture? Is this not a scene fitting of Halloween just a couple weeks away? <laughs> Warm and rainy. So, yeah, close to the first down marker. They get it on first down. The handoff sweeping to the left side. Dylan McMahon, a first down and more out of bounds near midfield at the 49-yard line, and that time the element of surprise worked very well for Derby. Absolutely. Nice stretch play by the Derby Red Raiders, and leading the blocking around the left side was Dwayne Jones. He's a six foot, 210 210-pound guard for the Red Raiders, and he led the blocking around the left side. Nice job there downfield. What's your thought about the... The end of rounds that have seemed to work very well for Derby here in this game. Excellent play call. Very big on the surprise factor. And now a give again. End around to the right side. Olanowski cuts back across the 50, close to the 45, and spotted at the 44-yard line. Nice run of nine yards on the play. Again, good blocking on the edge. The football was on the near side hash mark, which made the wide side of the field toward the Derby bench. And Olenowski made a, a good run going around the corner, turned up at the inside 
after the defense took away the outside, but he ended up getting nine on the, on the play. Nice job by the Derby Red Raiders. Second and one at the 44-yard line of Wolcott, 444 to go. And Small went straight ahead and got nothing on the play. Dropped for a loss of about three yards. Now this time they faked it to McMahon coming toward the near sidelines. And then a little crossbuck action for Smalls, and that did not fool the Wolka defensive line. They stayed home, shot the gaps, and did a nice job dropping Smalls for a loss. Credit Blaze Williams, the defensive tackle, with the stop second and three, backed up to the 46-yard line. Out of the gun for Krieger, and takes it straight ahead, right up the gut, the first down, and more up to the 37-yard line. And a first down on the ground for the Red Raiders. And that time linebacker Nicholas Rinaldi blitzed the A-gap. He blitzed it to the right side of the center on the defensive side of the football. And a great choice by a quarterback Krieger to go to the right side of the offensive set on the center and get the first down. First and 10, 3.51 to go in a quickly moving first quarter. A snap over the head of Krieger. He's got a fall on it and does so, and that one hurt. Backed him up into their own territory, way back at the 44-yard line. Huge loss on the play. 18 yards. And, you know, Krieger did the right thing by falling on that football. A lot of times high school players want to pick it up and run with it, and that can create more problems for them once they do. Heads up play. Shows Krieger, and although he is a sophomore, he's got a good head out there on his shoulders to get on top of that football and cover it up. And with how much rain we've seen in this part of the state, this field has done a good job of taking the rain. It's not that slick compared to what it could be with the natural grass. Second and long, a sweep to the left side. Swing pass to the left, McMahon, catch and run. He's got some room down the right sideline. McMahon, and knocked out of bounds at the 24-yard line. How's that for picking up some yardage? What, All's well that ends well. What a great vision of the field from McMahon that time. No room on the outside, on the near side. McMahon changes direction, goes all the way to the opposite sideline. Scampers inside the 30, down to the 21-yard line. It looks like a good spot there on the, uh, on the run, and McMahon gets the first down and puts Derby in a great field position, almost in the red zone. First and 10 at the 21-yard line and a timeout taken by Wolcott. They're going to talk things over. And that timeout, you would think, enough to as much to give the kids a little bit of a breather after that long run. I agree with you. And I think uh, at this point, you know, even the, uh, the coach may want to tell them, keep your heads up. You did a good job defending the way the play was going, and that was just a great offensive play. And this has turned into really quite a matchup here uh, between the Derby Red Raiders and the Woke at Eagles. And if you want to watch more of your school's great matchups, like the game you're enjoying here tonight, tell your school to sign up for Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. And for more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. So out of the timeout, first and ten. A ball spotted at the 21-yard line. Trips to the far side right, tough to see at the top of your screen. The handoff fumbled, but they stay with it as a sweep to the left side driven out of bounds. The wide receiver, Jordan LaRue, flag flying near the line of scrimmage and a loss of about th four yards on the play. Back to the 25-yard line. It may be a block in the back uh, against uh, the Derby. We'll see what the call is. It's out. Well, you might see a holding call or a block in the back, and uh, the umpire who's going to march the yardage off standing facing the Wolcott bench. So it is going to be a hold. And uh, it's a good call. I was just going to say, John, I think they should probably decline that because of the loss of yardage. And uh, that's exactly what the Wolcott Eagles did. So, yeah, it stays that five-yard loss back to the 25-yard line, 2.46 to go here in quarter number one. It is unseasonably warm. It is rainy. Visibility poor as out of the shotgun. For the quarterback, it's Krieger. Takes the snap, looking to throw. Aims it right, deflected, almost intercepted. You'd almost say he tried to thread the needle, but for Sino, the wide receiver, the only man around about six Wolcott 
high school Eagles. And the Eagles got a hand on it. Fresano got a hand on it. And another Eagle got a hand on it. That ball was caroming all over the defensive secondary. And that brings up an interesting choice here for the Derby Red Raiders. They've had success with the outside runs and uh, been tough to pass. We'll see what they do here on third and long. Yeah, third and 15 at the 25-yard line. Shotgun for Krieger, takes it himself, up the gut, bounces to the right, and a nice run, gets him back close to the original line of scrimmage, a five-yard pickup on the play. So fourth and long. Interesting thing is to try the, the field goal here, deep in the Wolka territory, not a game where the conditions are st suitable to make a pretty long field goal. I would agree, and I think uh, that was a designed quarterback draw that I think Derby was expecting to get a few more yards out of, and they are going to go for it here on fourth and ten. At the 20-yard line, shotgun, they bunch three receivers to the far side right. Rolling right, it's Krieger, throws back left across his body, over the head of the intended receiver. Dylan McMahon, who stretched out and just had that one go over, over his outstretched hands. McMahon with a double move that time, came off the left side, broke to the inside running a post pattern, and then cut back to the outside, and a flag pattern was the final outcome, and just overthrown, and he had a step on the receiver. That was pay dirt if that ball was on target. You'd have to think that at the very least, traction probably played into that, not able to get to it. I would agree. So first and 10 now for Walcott. Out of the shotgun for Nickel. Takes it himself. Nickel across the 20 to the 30. All alone at the 40. Midfield. And Nickel on his feet at the 20. Into the end zone for the touchdown. An 80-yard run on the quarterback keeper for Mike Nickel. 6-0 Walcott with the lead. And he had a, a gear I didn't think we'd see from a quarterback, John. He got into the open field, and he just turned it on and took off. That 80-yard run puts Wolcott on top, 6 to nothing, with a minute 37 left here in the first quarter. We did have a Derby player down on the field, and that was the player that was trying to run down the Wolcott quarterback, Mike Nickel. It may be Dylan McMahon. I'm not sure. It looked uh, like a number 7 flying up there behind the quarterback. And the players from both sides, Derby and Walcott, down on one knee. The customary stance, the cheerleaders as well as they await the player being tended to. 137 left to go here on this opening first quarter of play. Walcott, the early 6-0 lead over Derby. John Versteeg and Leo Bowler with you, our entire Play On Sports crew, soldiering on in what is certainly a night that brings makes it a little more interesting to bring high school football to you over Play On Sports and the CIAC website. The ball has been bouncing around a little bit on the turf. We had a bad snap. We had an, an almost fumble on the handoff on one of the end of rounds for Derby. They were able to control the football, but... Uh, Thus far, no one has had a turnover, and that was one of the, the, the things that was spoken about with the coaching staff before the game. We went down and talked to Coach Jason Pace. He said with the weather, he would like to protect the football, stop, make sure they don't get any turnovers. And one of the things he mentioned was he wanted long, sustained drives, but I certainly think he'll take an 80-yard run by his quarterback for the first points of the game. Absolutely. The injured player for Derby High School, is Dylan McMahon, and that's certainly very tough. I mean, he's kind of an do-everything sort of guy for them. He absolutely is. One of the favorite targets of quarterback Mike Krieger. We hope he gets back here and keeps uh, playing along here for the Derby Red Raiders. So on for the extra point is Keeley. The snap, the kick, high and good inside the right upright. And that completes the scoring drive. With 1.37 to go in the first quarter, it is a 7-0 lead for the homestanding Wolcott Eagles. 
And it was just a, a very special run there by Nickel. And you got to tip your hat to the inside of the Wolcott line. They did an excellent job, not only with the initial blocks at the line of scrimmage, they did a good job on second level blocking, which is when you go down and block the linebackers. And that's exactly what they did. They blocked out Derby's inside linebacker, Matt Nicolari, who is uh, one of the top tacklers on the Derby team. And uh, by getting in front of Nicolari, it was able to get loose and uh, the long run by Nickel for the touchdown. Yeah, and this is not a good pushover for for Derby. Nicolari leads the team with 37 solo tackles. It, absolutely. <laughs> anyway, he's not very big either, which is interesting. That he's playing inside linebacker. He's 5'10", 185. But, you know, speaking to uh, some coaches during the week, they tell me he is a guy that really likes to lay the lumber. He's a hitting, he's a hitting little inside linebacker. So after the 80-yard run by Nickel, set to kick it off is Keeley. And again, back deep to receive. It should be Dylan McMahon, but deep to receive for a wall cut and watching the ball sail out of bounds. The wall cut high school eagle. Joe Keeley can really kick the ball. That, uh, that is such a great weapon to have as a high school kicker. So we'll see what Derby can do now. Once again with 80 yards ahead of them, they, uh, they had a nice drive the last time they had the football. Let's see if they can do that again without Dylan McMahon. Yeah, he's been their deep threat. They go under center for Krieger. Bunch three receivers to the far side right. Toss sweep to the right side on the run. Tyree Small, the first down, and then some brings it forward across the 30 and up to the 36-yard line. Nice power run of about 16 yards on first down. And Small did a great job breaking tackles. He's a big, strong running back. He's 5'10", 190 pounds, and uh, he's only a junior, so he'll have another year next year, but he did a great job once he got to the edge, lowering the shoulder and shaking the tacklers. And for Derby, got the players in the stock blocking technique is again on first down, the give to Small, straight up the gut. And Small, two different runs, but two productive runs for Derby, brings them forward across the 40, up to the 42-yard line, six-yard pickup on the play. We're under a minute to go, quarter number one. Nice job by Matt Sear, the senior defensive back, coming up to assist on the tackle with Zach Berska. Berska's uh, uh, an inside linebacker and playing uh, playing upright. Always oh, listed as a D lineman. He's uh, playing inside linebacker. First down, give handoff to Small. The lone setback bounces forward across the first down marker at the 46, up to the 47 yard line. Very close to the first down, and then they do indeed move the chains. The chain gain along the far side of the field. Small's only averaging a little under 10 carries a game, and if Dylan McMahon does not re-enter the game, I think we'll see a lot more of Smalls tonight, so we'll see if that early season conditioning is going to pay off for Tyree Smalls. Yeah, for a spread team, they've been forced to keep it on the ground an awful lot. Sweep to the left side, moving to the left across the 46, knocked down back to the line of scrimmage. Justin Olanowski, a wide receiver who's seen a lot more time running the ball out of necessity here in this game. Olanowski had a little trouble getting to the edge that time and attribute that to the outside linebacker play for the Wolcott Eagles. They did a good job stringing that ball out to the outside and using the sidelines as a 12th defender. One yard loss on the play back to the 46 yard line. Shotgun. Roll to the right for Krieger, looking deep, but keeps it himself, and he's taken down for another one-yard loss back to the 45. And that is how the first quarter comes to an end. Derby facing a third and 12 when we come back. It's rainy. The visibility's poor. It's a warm night here in the Connecticut River Valley, a 7-0 lead for Walcott back for the second quarter after this on PlayOnSports.com. PlayOnSports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to 
great highlights. Follow us at Play On Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports. Playonsports.com. And how about the fans here on this night in the middle of October where you've had to squint with those eyes to kind of get narrow in on the numbers. Visibility not the best, but some, a lot of folks out here in Walcott tonight. You and I look like a couple of fighters in here. We're ducking and, and sticking inside each of the windows. We have to keep moving. There's a reflection on the windows and all that fog. You can't see anything unless you're moving window to window. It has been an interesting night to do this game. Certainly having fun. John Verstegen and Leo Bowler. Third down and long. The pass to the left, the fake, and now a throw to the right for Small. Catch and run. First down and more. 20, 10, and take it out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. How about that? The old fake to the left and dump it off to the right. Fantastic block by Trevor Giuliano, the senior 5'10", 200-pound offensive lineman out in front with a beautiful block. He did a nice job setting up the screen, a little pump fake by Krieger, and a great block downfield by Giuliano. 46 yards, they spot him out right at the 10-yard line. So a first and goal for Derby High School, down seven in the opening seconds of this second quarter. So Krieger is under center. And the give to the setback, bouncing straight up the middle, Nicolari. And Nicolari with two touchdowns, looking to get closer to that third two-yard pickup on the play. And that is running back number five to touch the football so far tonight for Derby. So when Coach French told us to keep an eye on the numbers because anybody between 1 and 49 pretty much is eligible to touch the football, and they just might. Clock running, 11.20 to go until halftime here at Monroe Field in Wolcott, Connecticut. Back to the shotgun. Krieger out of the gun. Small split off to his right. Trips to the far side left. Shotgun snap, looking left, going to keep it, holding on to it. Now it lobs it, corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Looks like Jordan LaRue on the catch, left corner of the end zone. Oh, I was keeping my eye on the line of scrimmage, and uh, that time Krieger dangerously close to crossing the line, and he did a great job pulling the defensive backs off the wide receiver and the nine-yard touchdown pass for Krieger. So we've got a ball game. 11 minutes to go, second quarter. Set the kick is for Sano, and he tucks it inside the left upright. Exactly tied at seven, and it took him just one full minute of football time here in the second quarter to march 46 yards up the field. And I have to admit, I was uh, watching the uh, defensive backs rush the quarterback. I didn't see who caught the touchdown pass. <laughs> Can you fill me in on that? <laughs> you're, you're, an old, uh, you're an old lineman. Those eyes are still trained to watch the line. Yeah, into the end zone. A nice pass to Jordan LaRue. LaRue. 7-7, seven, seven, a tied score. And, you know, we talk so much about the Naugatuck Valley League, the Torrington win over Holy Cross. The recruiting violations against Naugatuck High School going into the season. And now the allegations coming out about the hazing in Torrington. Naugatuck Valley League has made an awful lot of news for both good and bad here in this 2012 football season. That they have, and they're going to continue to make a lot of noise as the season goes on with the powerful football they can play. The uh, two, of These two teams ranked in the top ten in their respective divisions. Wolcott number one in Class M and Derby number eight in Class S. So both have an opportunity to get their way into the postseason and continue to make some news for the NVL. Joe Keeley, the junior, set to kick it off. And it's a line drive kick taken by the up back at the 30-yard line. 
So they didn't even try to go deep. Fairly decent field position for the Wolcott Eagles, and we'll see what, uh, which direction they're going to go. Their last play from scrimmage, an 80-yard touchdown for Mike Nickel. Is it just me, or has the fog gotten a little more dense as the game's gone along? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it's very difficult to see on the screen. <laughs> Shotgun. The snap straight ahead to Nickel. And he runs forward, powering his way for a gain up to the 36-yard line, it looks like, from nothing to a six-yard pickup on the play. Dwayne Jones, one of the defensive linemen, a six-foot, 210-pound senior for Derby in on the tackle. But uh, it did not look like Nickel was going to get quite that much yardage, but uh, a very strong runner pushes his way forward for the gain. Up to the 35-yard line, called a second dotted foreplay. Receiver to the near side left. A handoff and a keeper straight ahead for Nickel. He had everyone fake. Nickel into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, we've talked about Mike Nickel, the passer, but guess what? Keep the ball on the ground. He had five rushing touchdowns against Wilby last week, number two for the rushing score here tonight. Fantastic fake to the outside, and he laid the ball right into the belly of Joe Lynch. The defender, as we mentioned, he went to make sure Lynch couldn't get around the end, open up the hole for Nickel when he vacated, and Nickel flies for the 65-yard touchdown run. Keeley set to go for the PAT. The spot, the kick, and it is good. And you know what? For Mike Nickel, this is a kid that grew up playing youth football here in Wolcott, Leo. He was a running back, and when he got here to Wolcott High School, the freshman coach pulled him aside and said, son, we're going to make you a quarterback. <laughs> and I bet there was some begging and pleading to become a running offense, and uh, certainly great choice if uh, any adjustments were made. Mike Nickel, dangerous with the arm, dangerous with the legs. And of the two scores that he's had, both scores have been him hanging in the pocket, waiting, reading the defense, and that's something that head coach Jason Pace has said he's really worked a lot on the last couple of years. He did a great job reading the defensive end that time. As you mentioned, this uh, that read does have him sitting back in the pocket, puts the ball in the belly of Lynch. When that defensive end steps out, great choice for the quarterback Mike Nickel to take that inside hole by the vacated defensive end, and away he went. And once again, he shows that uh, he has the speed of a running back. Most of the quarterbacks you see can't run quite that fast. Well, there's Nickel who's shown it here tonight. He can th run and throw. And how about this game, how the game has turned? One score the first 12 minutes. We've seen two scores in the first minute 51 here in the second quarter. Kick back deep to receive for Wolka to run over the left side across the 20 up to the 22 yard line for Jordan LaRue. Nice job by LaRue to pick that ball out of the fog coming down out of the lights. It's, uh, it gets substantially brighter when you look up toward the lights and the, the fog gets quite thick. Able to take that ball out of the air and hang on to it. And uh, you know, so far it's both teams doing a good job taking care of the football, John. And, you know, you, you talk about what we've seen tonight with a lot of the runs. How difficult is it as a player? And you played high school and college ball. We'll talk about that as a first down. The handoff straight up the middle. Looked like the tailback, or excuse me, the tailback Tyree Small. Two-yard loss in the play. How tough for, for a kid is it to adjust on the fly trying to run and gun it, and then all of a sudden you got to keep it on the ground because the conditions aren't suitable. You know, I, I, I'm going to assume by talking to these two coaches that they have them quite prepared to do it, but, you know, in your mind you get yourself an image of, you know, what you're going to do on a Friday night, and when the weather changes, you're right, John. It is a pretty tough adjustment for these young men to, uh, to make that adjustment. So far, Wolcott with the advantage there. Second and long at the 17-yard line, forced to go out of the gun. 
It is Krieger, airs it out straight over the middle and overthrew it. About 10 yards in front of the receiver, down the left sideline, it's Jordan LaRue. That was 55 yards in the air. <laughs> that's, uh, that's quite a little flick of the wrist right there for the, uh, the Derby sophomore quarterback. Uh, I, I, I can't wait to see him as a senior. He's going to throw the ball a country mile. And we've talked, the last game you and I did was Ansonia and Torrington and their quarterback, McKnight. And certainly that's going to be interesting to watch the NVL mature in the next couple of years. Agreed. Empty backfield and the give. The quarterback keeper straight ahead. Krieger not able to get close to the original line of scrimmage. Fourth in a country mile. They're backed up inside the 20-yard line at about the 17 where the original loss occurred. Nice job defensively by Jim Nelson there, the uh, senior linebacker. He's good size too, 6'4", 225, and he made a nice ankle tackle on the quarterback. Ready to go with the punt is, looks like McMahon, and it's taken a roll back to the 49-yard line where it's down by Derby. The punter got hammered when he cut, pick, kicked that ball away, but one of the Wolcott Eagles got a hand on it, so that will nullify any running into the kicker or roughing the kicker penalties. Morrow down the ball for Derby. So tremendous field position for Walcott. Up seven, 14 to seven, 831 left to go here in this second quarter. As we are coming to you from Walcott High School, John Versteeg, Leo Bowler, our entire play on sports crew. Shotgun for Nickel, snap. Inside handoff for Lynch. Lynch bouncing to the right. He's on his feet still. First down and then more down the right sideline. Take it down shy of the goal line at the three yard line. A tremendous run of 42 yards for the tailback, Joe Lynch. Great job there by Lynch to get to the outside and then cut it back running parallel to the uh, the hash marks on the other side of the field. He did a nice job reading the blocks of his lead blockers and staying away from the defenders. Gets himself a first and goal situation for the Wolcott Eagles, and he is uh, down all the way to about the two-yard line. So pace is split out to the left. As Lynch on the give to Pace, straight ahead, up the middle, and into the end zone for the two-yard touchdown. And Walcott is up 20-7 to seven with 7.58 remaining here in the second quarter. And set up by the long run by, run by Lynch. And Walcott, proving they can score points in a hurry, continues their great second quarter. Extra point for... The junior, Keeley, just inside the upright. So a two-score lead, under eight to go. And Leo, in talking with Coach Pace, Coach Pace described his tailback, Joe Lynch, as saying, look, he can either run through you or run around you to get to the outside. We saw him run around the defenders for that 47-yard scamper and that power run up the middle for the two-yard score. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's got it all. He really does. He's got speed. He's got the strength. And he's got a great vision of the field. When he gets into the open, he can read a block by his lead uh, interference, and he can go right or left in a hurry. It's a, a, a very good Wolka team, and uh, we're seeing now why they are ranked number one in Class M. Now, that's based on points. But they are 5-0 and on the season and 3-0 and in the NVL. And remember, this is a Wolcott offense that put up 33 first-half points against Crosby. Rallied from 20 down to be Torrington, 39 to 34. 7.58 to go. Second quarter. The kick way back deep as Wolcott brings it out across the 20, a uh, gang tackle up to the 22-yard line, Nate Filippone, the freshman running back on the return there. It's been kind of a return by committee after the outstanding 
Richard man, McMahon went down. Wolk it with a very interesting kickoff that time. Never really officially broke out of their huddle. They just started running toward the football and spread out from the huddle formation to kick the ball. It looked like it may have been a, uh, I thought it was going to be an onside kick, but they kicked it away. Beg your pardon, it was for Sano on the, on the return. So first down for Derby. On the handoff, moving left off tackle up to the 30-yard line. Run on the play for Tyre Small. Tyre Small that time finding a very small hole to get through off the left side. And uh, he seems to have the ability to see the small holes and get a little bit smaller than uh, his shoulder pads are wide and turn sideways, get through the hole, gets his way forward for about seven. Shotgun as twins to the near and far sides. The fake of the handoff and running left out of bounds. Nowhere to go for the quarterback, Krieger. And he saw the open daylight on the sidelines and tried to cut his loss. That was a good job by it. Woke it again, running the defense as a, a bounce defense, we like to call it, is when you don't allow the player to turn upfield, you continue to make him bounce to the outside and when it's on the near, the far hash mark you have to use the sidelines as a 12th defender and that's just what Wolcott's doing pushing these things these runs out to the outside and they've done a good job stringing them along 21 to 7 Wolcott the lead over Derby 705 to go second quarter trips to the near side right looking to throw and nowhere for him to go sack for the loss back at the 25 yard line about three Wolcott High School defenders all around Krieger. You know, interestingly, the Derby Red Raiders only had three men in the patterns that time. Having to keep the extra players in to protect their quarterback, Mike Krieger. And, you know, another receiver in the patterns really opens things up to find an open guy. They just couldn't do it. The snap over the head of the punter. And he's got to go down near the goal line. Tough, tough play for Derby. Juan Paez has been the man who's been punting for them since Dylan McMahon been out of the game. And that time I think, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier that it was a heads up play for Krieger to fall on the ball when it was snapped over his head. That situation, I think Coach uh, French would have liked to see seen Paez pick it up and try to kick it away at that point. This gives Wilk at first and goal at the five yard line, the back of the ball on the line itself. He's trying to spread out that defense, trips to the near side left, the give, keeping it on the ground is Nickel and he goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Flag on the play, possibly in the backfield. And we'll see what the call is. A hold against Wolcott. So that negates the touchdown run, moves him back to the 15-yard line. Well, the flag came in kind of late in the play, but the, uh, the umpire who stands in the middle of the defensive uh, backfield right uh, by the linebackers had a good view of the hold, and uh, he fumbled for his flag originally. So I don't think he was waiting on that call. I think he just got the flag out late. 6.22 to go. Here in the second quarter, calling signals as a quarterback on the inside handoff to Lynch, moving left on a sweep into the end zone for the touchdown. 15 yard run for Joseph Lynch. Now a three score lead. It's 27 to seven in favor of Wolcott, 614 to go. And that touchdown set up by the, the bad snap on the punt for the Derby Red Raiders. And Joe Lynch capitalizes. And at 6-14, pushes the score to a 20-point lead. And we expected a very good game in this one. We've gotten it, but be tough to say one, this game would be one-sided halfway through the second quarter with how well these two teams have looked on paper. The extra point is good. Flag behind the defensive line for Wolka. Referees conferring. Wolka 
Well, I haven't seen any signals yet. I've heard I've heard some yelling, but I can't hear what he's saying. But there it is. So it goes against Wolcott High School. So half the distance going to be assessed on the kickoff. Playonsports.com is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. Playonsports.com. High school sports live here, John. Been a fun one here tonight. 28 to 7. Wolk at the lead uh, on top of Derby. Naugatuck Valley League matchup here at Wolk at High School. John Verstig, Leo Bowler with, it, with you. You know, as if Keeley needed any more help kicking the ball into the end zone, the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty actually ended up going against the Derby Red Raiders, and he's kicking from his own from the Red Raiders 45. Pushes it well into the end zone, over the head. Uh, for Sano, the return man, he doesn't even bother to try and return that one. So they're going to try and regroup the Red Raiders. First and 10 at the 20, 6.14 to go as quick as the first quarter moved. It's been as methodical as the second quarter has ticked on by. With all the scores, we're about halfway through quarter number two. And it has been all Wilcott Eagles. And uh, I don't know if it's a home field advantage or what, but there has seemed to be a big change in the attitude of the Eagles. They have done a great job dominating this second quarter. And here we, we see Derby burning another timeout, John. Yeah, they're trying to get things settled. They've got one timeout left to go. Wilcott with two. Again, 6.14 left to go. And... For Wolcott High School, a 21-point advantage here at home in an NBL showdown. And uh, I got to say, uh, John, Mike Nickel has been uh, more than what I expected to see. He has just been very, very good. He's got uh, an 80-yard run. He's got a 65-yard uh, a run. And uh, Joe Lynch, what a great compliment to uh, his quarterback as far as weapons go. He set his own two-yard touchdown run up with a 47-yard run. And uh, he just had a 15-yard run where, you know, it just seemed like he was in uh, another at another speed compared to everybody else out there. And it was just a great run by Lynch. Yeah, almost to a T how Coach Pace described him. Runs with toughness and speed and has tremendous power. Puts those attributes together when he runs. First down, the Jets sweep. Derby stopped for the loss in the backfield at the 11-yard line. A nine-yard loss on the play. And as we talk about him on offense, on defense, Joe Lynch comes up and assists on that tackle. He's a linebacker for the Wolcott Eagles, and he did a great job breaking through the line of scrimmage. And that jet sweep that was so successful for Derby earlier in the game, just no, no uh, way to go this time, nowhere to go for the Red Raiders. Jordan LaRue, before he could try and make the turn to the near side, had two defenders right on top of him. Under center. Now out of the shotgun. Krieger, and as he gets the ball, the whistle blows the play dead. Looks like a possible false start on the offense. 527 remaining, quarter number two. It looked like one of the wide receivers may have changed his front foot while he was waiting for the ball to be snapped. And that is uh, the call, John. Good call on the false start. It's been a fairly good game penalty-wise, and we've had a couple of holding penalties. That unsportsmanlike conduct is just really strictly frustration uh, on the Derby Red Raiders part after the score went to 21-point lead. But uh, relatively well-played game so far. Yeah, it moves them back to the 14. Uh, throw over the middle, in and out of the hand of Jordan LaRue. So LaRue, who was dropped for the nine-yard loss in the Jets' sweep, ran over the middle. And you know what? You talked to Coach French. He said the strength is team speed. And right there, the team speed worked for him. They just weren't able to pull it in. You know, maybe we saw just a little bit of the sophomore maturity level of 
the quarterback, uh, Mike Krieger. I think he took a li if he takes a little bit off of that ball and floats it in as opposed to burning it in and, and throwing it a little behind his intended receiver, he may have had a completion and a first down on that last play. Third and 21. Inside their own 10, airing it out. Over the middle, jump ball and overthrown. Might have been possibly tipped. Tough to see with the poor visibility. But it was LaRue this time split out along the left sideline, tried to go for the leap around the 40. And I'll tell you, Matt Sear was covering on the play. And, uh, I, you know, John, I think he got away with a little uh, pass interference. The ball was thrown well over the head of the attended receiver, but in the Federation rules, there's no such thing as an uncatchable pass. So tremendous field position again forthcoming for Walcott. A punt from the end zone, and it takes a, a bounce for Derby all the way, pushing them back out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That is a blessing for Derby, a nice punt from Brian Eliason, who's listed as a running back and linebacker. He got 20 yards back the other way. <laughs> Ball all the way back to the 30-yard line, and that's... Uh... I think a big sigh of relief on the uh, team on the other side of the field there, making, uh, making the field a little bit longer for the Wolcott Eagles, but uh, they can score so quickly. They have so many weapons. It's uh, at this point in time, I think uh, Derby would like to get into the clubhouse with just a tw three touchdown deficit at this point. 4.53 to go, 28-7, to Wolcott with a lead. And a penalty. 12 men on the field, John. It looked like the defense had quite a few people out there. I just counted there were 12 on the field for the Derby Red Raiders. So first down. It's a great D if you can get away with it. Five-yard <laughs> five loss in the play. First and five out of the... Shotgun, the give and keep by Nickel as he bounces forward across the 40 up to the 42-yard line. Awfully close to the first down, they get it. With the wind and rain in their face. You can hear a little bit of the wind to pick it up in our microphones here in this one. Wind shifting a little bit now. It hasn't been blowing in this window very strong uh, for the majority of their first part of the game. and. You know, right now we're looking for paperweights here to hold on all of the uh, notes that we've been taking this game, and uh, and we've got one. <laughs> Binoculars good for more than uh, than one use. First and ten at the 42-yard line. Clock back running. 4:44 in counting here in the second quarter. 28 to seven. Wolk at the lead over Derby. Shotgun for Nickel. Pair of receivers each way. Nickel looks right, dumps it over the middle, and it's caught. Bringing it forward across the 30 up to the 27-yard line. Jay Pelletier, he rolled to the right, did Nickel, and just deposited that one into the secondary. Nice job getting it over the outstretched hands of Sal Fresano. And Pelletier with a, a nice catch to concentrate on that ball coming over the top of a defender and over his left shoulder and makes a nice catch. Nice pass there once again by quarterback Mike Nickel. And the joke at practice for Coach, Coach Pace that Pelletier so determined to run the right route in practice that he doesn't drop the ball. Didn't drop it there when it counted. First down handoff, sweep to the left side. Running across the 25, inside the 25, it is Joe Lynch. And he didn't get as much as he would have liked on that play. Got popped at the end, though. Uh, he did, and uh, he did a, a good job lowering the shoulder and uh, making sure that the defender felt that hit just as much as he did. I think, I'm not sure who the defender was. It looked like, uh, it looked like Sal Fresheno. I'm not certain, but uh, what, a, what a hit. Actually, it's... Uh, it's the right outside linebacker wearing a number I don't have on my roster. Number four. Let's see. Uh, that is uh, Josh Russell. 
Second and seven after the three-yard pickup of the 25. Handoff, Nickel bounces left. Nickel on the move to the 10, five, stiff arm into the end zone. Another rushing touchdown for Mike Nickel and Wolcott up big. 34 to seven, 347 left to go until halftime. Again, Nickel just doing it all, John. He is such a talented athlete that uh, he has, uh, is really going to give Wolcott a good opportunity to go very deep into the postseason here in Connecticut. Stiff arm with the left arm. You could tell he grew up playing running back. Kid's not afraid to throw the stiff arm when needed. The kick on the way. No good. Pushed it right. So it's a 34-7 to lead for Wolcott. And they can thank Mike Nickel. Six touchdowns against Wilby last week, five on the ground. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Well, tell your school to sign up for Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. 3.47 remaining until halftime and... Yeah, this is the game that a lot of folks watching throughout the state, a one-loss derby team, an undefeated Wolcott squad. I think you found out a little bit of the moxie of both teams and a lot more folks tonight seeing how good Wolcott really is. Absolutely, and uh, Wolcott got a tough game next week. Um, they uh, are going to play another NVL rival uh, while they move up to play Watertown. Derby goes to Naugatuck. So on the kick for Keeley, shoots it left, and it takes a, a bounce into the end zone. And that shows you how powerful the kick is for Keeley. He's kicking into the wind, and that ball had a lot of movement on it. It, it certainly did, and uh, I know I've repeated it many times, but that is such a great weapon to have. And, uh, you know, I'd like to see what uh, Wolcott will do in a fourth and long situation in field goal range. I'd love to see how accurate the uh, Achilles leg is. Yeah, that's going to be a sight to see. Plenty of time left in this ball game here on this beautiful Friday night. And the Naugatuck Valley here in western Connecticut. First down handoff straight up the middle for Derby. Tyree Small. Very interesting, Small and Matt Nicolari combining for about 520 yards with both of them through the first six games of this season. They may approach that total tonight. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a night of uh, huge offensive numbers for Wolcott. Shotgun now, the give to Small, accelerating up the middle, loses the ball. It's picked up by Wolcott, and Wolcott at the 40 to the 41 yard line. Matt Sear, the senior, picked it up on the fumble recovery. Uh, I'm wondering if that might be one if there were red flags available on the coaches on the sidelines if they would toss it to see if Small had hit the ground be with his knee before that ball came loose. But when it came loose, it came loose with a vengeance. It bounced about six or seven yards before bouncing into the hands of Matt Sear. And uh, that is the last thing that Derby wanted to see as a turnover when they're looking to sustain a long drive and keep this powerful Wilkett offense off the field. I did say he brought it up to the 41, back down to the 39. Beg your pardon there. They bunch up three receivers left. Now in motion on the first down handoff is the tailback Lynch. And Lynch accelerates forward across the first down marker at the 29 up to the 26-yard line. 13-yard run on the play. Once again, Woke gets uh, Joe Lynch with just uh, a great vision of the field. He cut back to the outside when he saw a little bit of defender, defenders coming at him. Turn that into a nice 12-yard run for the first down. And uh, right now, Derby's defense has been out there for a long time, John, and they've got to be getting quite tired. Yeah, they are continuing to work hard in this one. On play action, 
dump over the middle, in and out of the hands of the wide receiver, Matt Sear, and he was streaking towards the end zone. I got to say it. That would have been catch number 10 and touchdown number 6 because <laughs> uh, he was wide open. He's got nine catches and five touchdowns. Looked to me like that would have been 10 and 6. Yeah, he was running that post pattern and had him beat more towards the middle of the of the goal, 2.33 until halftime. And Walcott utilizing some different plays here. Single back in the backfield is Lynch. Split just to the left of the quarterback out of the gun. Nickel takes it himself. And swarmed and gang tackled up to the 25-yard line. Gain of two on the run. Stop made by Matt Nicolari, the leading tackler for the Derby Red Raiders. And, John, I, I, I know you can see the, the way that Nickel is cradling the football as he runs toward the line of scrimmage. Nick, Nickel has an opportunity to take that ball through that hole that opens up, or he can also go to the outside, and you'll see Lynch trailing him as the pitch man. So a, a, a play we haven't seen from Wolkett that is such a dangerous play that they haven't taken out of their uh, playbook yet tonight. Hand off, throw left, underthrown towards the end zone. Flag flies at the end. Probably going to be pass interference on Derby. It was right in front of the back judge. That was another one of those balls that may not have been catchable, but there is no rule in a federation about uncatchable passes. And... Uh, the defender just would not allow Matt Sear to get to the football, and he was being covered on the play, I believe, by uh, Olenowski. It was intended for Audubert. Buck 44 in quarter number two, 34 to 7. Wolcombe with the lead. Can twins to both sides on the receiver's front. Dropping back, keeping it, and falling down for a, a loss is nickel. Two yards just inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. It brings up second and 13. We'll give credit for the sack to Johnny Rowland, a defensive end junior. 5'10", 175, came in from his right spot to make the tackle, and... Uh, Leaving the game right now is uh, Blair Mitchell, their senior offensive and defensive lineman, injured. We hope he gets back into the game for Derby. The man in motion is Lynch, and they fake the handoff to Lynch in too easy. Straight ahead, end zone touchdown for Nickel. Another score for Nickel. He just had to leap up over the defender who tried to grab him around the ankles. And what an epic game thus far here in the first half for Mike Nickel. That 14-yard run added to his 80 and his 65-yard touchdown runs and uh, three touchdowns on the night for Mike Nickel. Make it four. He had a, uh, the last touchdown was also Nichols. So the PAT is good for Keeley. He's had a lot of practice here tonight. 57 and 5, 10 seconds left to go. Halftime of a 41 to 7 lead for Wolcott. And at this point, if you're Derby, want to see those seconds tick away and just try and regroup. And, you know, Derby is uh, a team that does run a spread. They like to, they will throw the football, but the weather has not been conducive to that tonight. So coming back in this game is a mon going to take a monumental effort on the behalf of Derby. But, uh, you know, really at this point, you know, maybe just continue to work on your game plans. You know, put this one behind you and continue to try and move the football, whether it's long sustained drives or, you know, work the plays that you came in here to try and accomplish and uh, make yourself better for the remainder of the season if you're the Derby Red Raiders. Kelly once again on kickoff. Powerful right leg put into it. And at the 20, up to the 25 yard line. A flag comes in after the play.
for Sano on the return. You might see a call right here against Derby on a late hit, or against Wolcott on a late hit. And then a response by the Derby players, and uh, it's almost always the response that either gets called or if they both get called, the response is what takes away the long yardage. A personal foul against Wolcott on the late hit. Point of emphasis at all levels of football, certainly here at the high school level. Absolutely. Absolutely. You've got to protect these players. And uh, in particular, you've got to protect their heads. They're going to make sure nobody's leaving here with concussions and so on. And, uh, and late hits are uh, certainly have to be cracked down on. And uh, you know, the official's doing a good job right on top of it. All the way up to the 39-yard line after the 15-yard walk-off. First and 10 for Derby. Again, out of the shotgun. Krieger, handoff straight up the middle. No, no gain on the play. Forward progress perhaps netting them one. Small on the carry. A little over 30 seconds left to go. Quarter number two. Hard to believe a 7 nothing game at the end of the first 12 minutes. Absolutely. This has been a tremendous quarter for Wolcott. 18 seconds to go. Again, fake roll to the right for Krieger. Launching it down the sideline. Double coverage out of bounds. Intended for Nicolari. Credit a few of the Wolcott defenders on the coverage, including Tyler Prescott, the senior defensive back. We've seen Krieger throw the ball after leaving the pocket a few times tonight, and he, uh, he does a good job with his awareness of where the line of scrimmage is. Runs basically right to it. We throw him throw a touchdown pass on the lone score for Derby tonight, and he just did it there where he overthrew the ball, but uh, good field awareness of where that line of scrimmage is, John. Shotgun. Looking to move on the run. Krieger absorbs the hit. Across the 40 up to the 41 yard line, and that is how the first half comes to an end. So, for Walcott, who had a 7 0 lead, a blitzkrieg of an offense after a 7 7 tie, they scored 34 unanswered here in the second quarter. And it's been Mike Nickel and Joe Lynch. The whole second quarter was their show. They just did a tremendous job. And uh, defensively, Wolcott took it to another level in the second quarter and just really shut down the Red Raiders. 37 unanswered points. That brings us to halftime where it's Wolcott 41, Derby 7. Stay tuned. We'll be back for the call of the second half after this on PlayOnSports.com.
But set for the start of the second half. Wolk at 41, Derby 7, John Versteeg, Leo Bowler, our producer Brian Byrne here at Wolk at High School. And first half scoring, just two two words, one name, Mike Nickel for Wolk. Absolutely. It started out with an 80-yard run by Mike Nickel with 137 remaining in a very quiet first quarter. The extra point was good by Joe Keeley, and it was 7-0 Wolcott at the end of one. Opening up the second quarter with just a minute gone by, Mike Krieger hit Jordan LaRue in the end zone, and Sal Frasino's extra point was good, and the game was tied just one minute into the second quarter, 7-7. But just 51 seconds later, Mike Nickel with a 65-yard run, and the extra point by Keeley was good, and it was 14-7 Wolcott. The next touchdown was a two-yard run by Joe Lynch that was set up by a 47-yard run just one play before by Lynch that made it 20-7. to Keeley's extra point pushed it to a 14-point lead. And 6-14 remaining in the second quarter after a bad snap to a new punter after Dylan McMahon was injured and a first-and-goal situation for Wolcott. And after a penalty, it was Joe Lynch running it in from 15. And Keeley's extra point made it 28 to 7. And with 3.47 left, Mike Nickel again on another touchdown run of 34 yards made it 34 to 7. The extra point went wide. And then with just 57 seconds left in the first half, a 14 yard run by once again Mike Nickel. And the Keeley extra point was good. And that is where we stand 41 7. Woke it all over the Derby Red Raiders. Be interesting to see how the second half begins. If you're woke it, do you approach that 50-yard threshold, so to speak, early in the second half, or do you try and ease the foot off the gas in the early going? Yeah, it's, it's a big question because I know that there are probably quite a few kids on the near side sidelines wearing those red jerseys who would love the coach to push it to a bigger lead to get them some playing time but uh, right now Derby is going to have to kick off to Wolcott and give that offense another opportunity on the field and you know there's another choice too Mike uh, excuse me John when do they take Mike Nickel out of the game and and not take an opportunity for him to get a shot in the backfield and get hurt with such a big lead and so many big games coming up We've seen Vincent Gambino early on in the warm-ups before the game tonight. 7 for 12 with 66 yards, one touchdown. He is a sophomore and is their backup quarterback. Set to go here at the start of the third quarter. Set to kick it off for Derby is Paez. A couple of players back deep to receive for Wolcott. And it's a high end over end kick. And taken across the 25 to the 30, up to the 35 yard line. And a nice return for Nate Filippo to get the Woolcott offense started seven seconds in to quarter number three. A thrill for a freshman to get in and be able to return the opening kickoff of the second half for Filippo. He, uh, he does get some time on special teams for this Woolcott Eagle team. Young fella's got some wheels. 10 plus yard pickup on the play. The return, 35 yard line, first down. And out of the shotgun for Nickel. Lynch split to his left, Nickel takes it and bounces forward across the 40, up to midfield, taken down from behind at the 41 yard line and Nickel running effortlessly gets the first down. He's just so talented. He is just, uh, you know, he can go. He can go either way. He can run right. He can run left. He can throw the ball down the field. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, they'll be graduating him this year, and they will, he will be sorely missed here in Wolcott. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. And the wind and the mist has stopped, so our viewpoint has cleared up. You could see a much clearer picture on your screen watching at home. Lead on the sweep to the right side for Lynch. Goes across the 40 up to the 36-yard line. Nice five-yard pickup on the play for Lynch. Nice tackle by Charlie Sampson to come across from his outside linebacker spot and wrap up Lynch. But Lynch, even though he got hit just inside the 40-yard line, able to fight his way down to the 41, 
So there's those hidden yards, those yards after contact are uh, very important for a team to be successful, and Lynch able to do that that time. Second and five at the 36. Trips to the near side and right at the bottom of your screen. Pelletier and Prescott bunched up. A sweep to the left, the opposite way for Lynch, and he's out of bounds inside the 30 at the 25-yard line. 10-yard run on the play. Nice misdirection for Wolcott. Another first down. Nice job again by Wolcott to, uh, to, to just grind up the yardage here, and I think their, their goal is probably to just continue to uh, run it with uh, four or five yards, a little cloud of dust, so to speak, and uh, just keep grinding out the first downs, but their plays are so successful, they're able to get first down after first down and move the ball seemingly effortlessly down the field. The direct snap now for, or the snap to the backup quarterback, Gambino, gave on the inside handoff to Lynch. So now we see Vincent Gambino. So it took a few plays in the second half to see our first look at Gambino. And let's see if they'll continue to stay with Gambino or perhaps mix up the looks with both Nickel and Gambino in a two quarterback system. Gambino, a 5'7", 146-pound sophomore. A little room to fill out. Yes, he does. Shotgun for Gambito. Lynch to his right. Gambito takes it himself, bounces off the right tackle. 25-yard line up to the 24. So third and long, 9.30 and counting here at quarter number three. And you see for Wolcott, perhaps by design, a little more time in the huddle, talking the plays over before going to the line of scrimmage. Absolutely, and uh, I think that's exactly what uh, what's going on here, John. I think you're right. It is by design, slow the game down a little bit, then ground some clock up and, uh, and not put it too much, uh, too many more points up on the board here. Lynch the motion man, bobble of the handoff. They still give it to Lynch as he moves forward up to the 20 yard line. Four yard pickup on the play, but a flag in the backfield. And it'll come back holding against Wolcott. And when that flag first hit the ground, John, it was just inside the 30 yard line. So I thought the uh, the penalty was going to be huge because holding is marched off from the point of the infraction. But the referee picked up his flag, moved it down inside the 25 to the 24, and the penalty drops the Wolcott Eagles back to their 34-yard 34, 34 line of the Derby Red Raiders. Yeah, generous in terms of where that, that flag was placed. So third and 20. Four receivers to the top of your screen, the far side of the field. Gambino on the misdirection, tried to bounce forward between the left tackle and guard and see if he can get some yardage to no avail. Fourth down and the punting crew coming on for the Eagles. He faked that end around to Joe Lynch once again, that reverse play that uh, Wolka play, ran in the first half and there was no one home to the outside for the Derby Red Raiders, so they dodged a bullet there when the quarterback, Vin Gambino, decided to hang on to the football. Nickel ready to punt. Back deep to receive for Sano for Derby. Plenty of time as they are waiting to call it. And a delay of game against Wolcott by design to move that ball back and hopefully get them a little bit more room to punt to try and tuck it inside the 10. The last punt that Nickel delivered to the Derby Red Raiders hit the ground at the five and bounced out at the three. So we'll see if that's uh, going to be another punt like that. A long punt, and it takes a bounce into the end zone, a derby bounce, and awfully tough to 
to tuck that ball inside the five, middle of the field, especially with how much moisture that's on the field for much of the day today. Although Nickel did a good job. The ball didn't bounce very strongly into the end zone, and, Der and uh, Derby did uh, get a break there by the ball crossing the line, uh, the, that goal line, and they'll get the ball at the 20, and that is uh, a long way for this Red Raider team to move the ball against this very solid Wolcott defense. And let's see, with the rain stopping, if they'll go back to the original plan to spread it out, they keep it on the ground, first down, rolling off the right tackle. Small the tailback, he has been a workhorse here tonight. And you wonder at what point if you're Coach George French, do you try and air it out, 10, 15 yard looks? You definitely have a, uh, an opportunity if you send a lot more people into the routes. He's only had one or two, sometimes three at the most receivers into the patterns. I'd like to see more of the Red Raiders out in the secondary. Swing, swing pass left side for LaRue. He's been a favorite target. Gets him forward for a three yard pickup on the play. Third down and seven to the 23 yard line. 640 in count. Good read there by both Brandon Walker and Matt Sear to come up and stop that bubble screen from getting really underway when they we weren't really able to get uh, any forward, pro forward progress at all, any momentum going downfield because they were all over that pass. Quarterback and Krieger chips to the far side right, fakes the throw to the right, and is sacked, hit from behind, taken down back at the 20-yard line. He was looking to his right to throw the ball, and he had LaRue wide open on the left, unfortunately not able to go through his progressions because he had so much pressure. Brandon Walker, the senior linebacker, credited with the sack. Fourth down. And the punty crew is on. A wobbly punt, it takes a bounce, a derby bounce, back inside the 40 at the 37 and a half yard line, a booming punt for Derby. Do you wanna watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're watching right here tonight? Well, tell your school to sign up for Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. And for more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Forty-one to seven. Wolcott the lead over Derby. Five twenty-six to go. Third quarter. First down. Snap to the quarterback McMahon, rolling left around the end across the forty and thirty-five to the forty and forty-five up to the forty-seven yard line. A nice ten-yard power run. And a very uncharacteristic missed tackle by Mike Nic Nicolari in the backfield. He blitzed through the A-gap, which is the gap between the left guard and the center on offense in that particular play. He went right through the gap, and it looked like he was going to wrap Gambino up in the backfield, but left his feet a little early, and Gambino able to turn that into positive yardage. Was pushed out at the 45-yard line, so second and two. And movement on the defensive line for Derby. And that time, Nicolari picked the A-gap on the right side of the offensive center. And uh, unfortunately for Nicolari, he was three yards behind the line of scrimmage before the ball was snapped. And thank you very much, says Walcott. That gives them a first down. Five-yard pickup on the play to midfield right at the 50-yard line. 420 and counting. And that's your backup quarterback with the hard count right there. And uh, you like to see that young, uh, young man learning from the uh, older quarterback and the coaches can give that hard count and uh, steal a first down here and there. And a lot of time taken off the clock, of course, by design with the 34-point advantage. Shotgun, Gambino. 
Hand off straight up the middle. A power run of one yard on the play and now into the backups, Blaze Williams, the senior running back with the pick up there. Nice job by the Derby Red Raiders to close that hole up as it opened up on the line of scrimmage and Williams coming off the field. He's favoring his right foot, but uh, he changes his mind and heads right back to the huddle. So Williams shaking that one off and staying in the game. 325 here in quarter number three. Great to have you with us here on PlayOnSports.com. Our entire crew, John Marcuse, doing a great job on the camera. Brian Byrne producing with us here at the booth. Leo Bowler alongside of John Prestig. Looks like a timeout called by Walcott with 3.12 to go. Full slate of timeouts now. They've gone to that well. Walcott with two timeouts left to go. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports. Playonsports.com. Been a busy season thus far here in the fall got a game tomorrow night here on playonsports.com outstanding high school sports coverage nationwide that should be a good one you've got you've got glastonbury five and zero, oh, and uh who are they playing tomorrow southington night? southington another five and zero oh team so battle of the unbeatens tomorrow in glastonbury nice facility you're going to get to go to as well 312 remaining here in this one and and watching the weather forecast, you knew it was going to be a, a wet Friday. And there was some talk before about possibly moving this game to Saturday morning. But they looked at the forecast, correctly called it, uh, to move out around halftime. 41-7. to seven. The, hate, the fake to the handoff. And drop for the loss in the backfield is Phillip Bone. They tried to do a little misdirection but unfortunately got caught for the five yard loss. A nice tackle there by Trevor, Juli Trevor Giuliano. He's a senior 5'10", 200 pound defensive lineman. Came from the right defensive guard spot. You're gonna see a mixed four here, a multiple four set with the Derby Red Raiders. Well, they'll have four down linemen and sometimes they'll run four defensive uh, linebackers. Sometimes they'll run three when they need an extra man in coverage and that time he came from the right side of the defensive line and made a nice play in the backfield. And a very good linebacking core. You talked about Nicolari with the 37 tackles, both Eliason and Small, the other two linebackers, normally double digits in tackles. They've been quiet here tonight. And the handoff. Right, was faked in Gambino. Carries it towards midfield, just picks up a, two, a few more yards on that play, fourth down, the Redder to punt it away. And I think uh, Derby got away with an encroachment that time. It looked like they broke the line of scrimmage, but no flag on the play, and a nice play by Blair Mitchell to make the tackle at the line of scrimmage and force Wolkett to punt. 150 and counting, quarter number three. Nickel is back in as the punter. Right foot into it. Line drive punt, and Forsano picks it up, sweeps around the left side, and a flag in the backfield as Forsano across the 35 up to about the 37-yard line, maybe a block in the back. I think I saw it, actually. I believe it came from uh, Tyree Small. Uh, it, it's being called uh, an illegal use of hands, but uh, I think it was from from behind, Small uh, did did bang into the defender from behind. There was also another block that looked like it was in the back, right at the point where the ball was caught after the punt, but uh, no call was made. And now Derby moving back to a deeper hole at this point inside their own 20 to start this drive. Buck 29, left in quarter number three. No scores here in this third quarter. 41 to 7 advantage for Wolkett. First down, a give to Small, sweep around the right end, across the 20. 
up to about the 21 yard line. Four yard pickup of the play, second and six. Nice job driving, driving small out of bounds that time by Brandon Walker, who's having a very solid second half here defensively. And, you know, I was going to steal one of your phrases a little bit earlier when you said no scores here in the second half. I was going to say by design because it has been, I believe, on, uh, on Wolcott's behalf not putting the ball in the end zone. Yeah, certainly the plan with what we talked about. This is the last game we did, right? First game of the season at Sonia Torrington. Similar situation with Ansonia up big. First down, carry small, straight up the middle for about two. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Ansonia, you know, unfortunately, their opening game of the season, they had their entire second team and down to the third team by the time they got to the third and fourth quarter. And uh, it doesn't uh, do you much good when you're uh, trying to get ready as the season goes on. First game, not really a big deal, but... First down run as Small bounces forward. Hard yardage across the 40 up to the 41 yard line. How about Tyree Small continuing to pound out the yardage? He really keeps his legs driving and uh, runs very low to the ground. He's got a low center of gravity. He does a nice job keeping his balance and uh, Really uh, uh, a guy as a junior that uh, you really look forward to seeing his senior year as well as he's having a very stellar junior year. Shotgun Krieger, handoff small, bounces right. Now angles left, straight up the middle. 45 to the 46-yard line, five-yard pickup. Under 30 seconds to go. Nice job on the zone blocking there for Derby and a great read of the blocks by Smalls. As the defense flowed to the left, the hole open to the right for, well, on the left of the offense as well. And the opposite side, it was a nice job by Smalls to read that and uh, gain the six yards. And that is where the third quarter will come to an end. Near midfield with Derby driving down 41 to seven. Wolcott with the lead over Derby through three quarters in an NVL matchup here at Wolcott High School. Play on Sports is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. Playonsports.com. High school sports lives here. What a great atmosphere here at Wolcott High School. A tremendous concession stand. Fried Twinkies, John. Did you get a chance to try those? I didn't yet. I've never had one. And I tell you, I almost asked them to put one aside for me on the way out of here because, uh, I don't know, I, I just need to try that. I, you know, I watch my weight most of the time. But, you know, this time I think I might throw caution to the wind. That is a bucket <laughs> list item you got to try, a fried <laughs> Twinkie. Unusual item for yeah. a sporting event, but that is one of the things that makes – High school football in the concession stand here at Walcott High School, one of the more memorable ones, right? It, it may give you a foot in the bucket, I think, if you uh, go ahead and eat one of those, but it is a bucket list item, I agree. 41 to <laughs> 7, Walcott with the lead. Derby on the move. Under center is Krager, bouncing right on the second and five play. Small, close to the first down marker. I'm going to bring the chain gain out, and it is indeed called the first down. So a little bit of confusion yeah. as now they move the, the sticks on the yeah. far side. They were both right together. I wasn't sure quite what was going on over there. I thought it was coming out for a measurement as well. Hurry up, huddle to the line. First and 10, 48-yard line. Shotgun for Krieger. Fakes the handoff. Krieger takes it himself. Hole opens up, and it goes forward. 45 up to the 42-yard line. Six yards on an easy run up the middle. Nice job by uh, Krieger to kind of sidle through that hole. He uh, turned himself sideways and squeezed forward another three or four yards after that hole opened up. And uh, yeah, this is the kind of drive that Derby was looking for earlier in this game, executing quite well here and late in the game. Yeah, a lot of the early runs from Mike Nickel, the started quarterback for Wolcott, were just that on big holes up the middle. Small fights forward for the extra yardage, brings it across the 40, 
41 yard line, close to the first down marker. Brings up third and short. And looking through the Wolcott defense, they have gone you know, into their bench a bit to uh, give some guys some playing time, but uh, you know, certainly a solid defense still out on the field. Not all the starters, but some anchors. And uh, Derby able to move the football thus far here early in the fourth. Krieger again, they go right back to Small off the right side of the line between the guard and tackle. Small the first down marker, which comes at the 32-yard line. Seven yards with a run. They're marching towards the end zone looking for their first score. And now one player is down on the ground. That is Blair Mitchell for the Derby Red Raiders. And uh, I think Tyree Smalls was shaken up on that play as well. He was bent over and went down on a knee prior to everyone else going down on a knee, which, uh, you know, is, I, I like this, John, you know, that both sides of the field in honor of the player that's hurt go down on one knee, even the players on the bench. That used to be just the players on the field would do it. Now all the players do it to uh, kind of support the player that's out on the field, and I think I like that. Yeah, great show of respect on both sides. And Mitchell, the right tackle. Geez, we haven't even had a chance to mention the Derby offensive line. Been one of their strengths this year. All five starters are seniors. Wealth of experience for head coach George French. And that's uh, what I think Coach French was uh, was hoping would be his success tonight was the battle in the trenches to uh, to dominate that line of scrimmage. But Wolcott able to do a good job not only with their defensive line, John. They've done a good job with their linebackers filling holes. And uh, uh, quite often your your defensive linemen don't make a lot of tackles at the line of scrimmage. But if they're occupying offensive linemen you have to give them kudos because that's leaving your linebackers free to make tackles. So quite often when I would coach defensive teams, I would ask my defensive linemen to give up the glory of the tackle. Occupy two linemen. Make them double team you. Gives the linebackers a chance to get their name announced by the PA announcer. But the credit really goes to that defensive line who's occupying the offensive lineman and leaving the linebackers free to roam. 10-10 remaining fourth quarter. Derby continuing to move. Krieger under center, three receivers bunched to the top of your screen, toss sweep to the left side, running laterally, hit and drop for a loss in the backfield. Roberto Soto, the sophomore wide receiver, they used him on the jet sweep attempt. And those are one of the plays that the Derby players who are on the field right now are not going to want to see on film night, John, because as they ran around that left side, the two lead blockers were three yards behind all the defensive players, and the coach is going to ask them, where were you going? <laughs> you, you had a job to do, but you continued right past your blocks. Yeah, that was been, that's going to be a point of emphasis for Wolcott. On second and 11. Sebastian Hernandez fought forward, got those two yards back, third and nine. And the clock now right at nine minutes to go, fourth quarter. 41 to seven, Wolk at the lead. So Derby going kind of deep on their bench with their running backs, John, but uh, leaving quarterback Mike Krieger in the game, late in the game. Yeah, this is a learning experience for the sophomore. Rolling to his right, throwing, pass caught at the 15. Taken out of bounds near the 10-yard line. Josh Russell makes the catch. Russell, five feet, five inches tall. 140 pounds and out there ripping the ball out of the air. He's got another year left as well to not only uh, catch more passes, but to uh, maybe get a little more height and give uh, Krieger a chance to, uh, to throw to him as well. Nice catch made out there by Josh Russell. And it's Russell lined up on the near side or right. About the hash mark. Krieger, the give, first down, and they read it beautifully. Dropped for the loss. And the backfield, again, it is indeed Hernandez with a call once again. 
Hernandez didn't get much blocking at the line of scrimmage that time and got hit pretty hard by several Wolcott Eagles. And uh, right now they've got uh, three men standing up at the line of scrimmage, so I think they've jumped into their three-man front. Their nose guard is huge. I'm going to get a look at his number. He's a big guy. A direct snap. Ben Slowick, quarterback. Uh, Slowick, not even listed as the backup in their depth chart. Slowick moved it forward up to the 10 yard line. Four yard pickup on the play. <laughs> so third down at seven. Seven ten and counting here in the fourth quarter. Slowick. Stays back in, shotgun, throws off his back foot and over through the end zone. Yeah, Slowick throwing where the receiver should have been, right in front of the end zone, didn't read the play there. He had his man lined up. No one was free in that left corner of the end zone. You know, I'm looking at the, the lineup that reads that number 72 just came into the game to... Uh, is listed at 5'11", 260, but he looks more like he's about 6'5 out there. He's uh, he's just huge. He's playing the left tackle. He's listed as uh, Tyler Evan, but uh, I'm not sure if that uh, is Tyler. Now the handoff, the misdirection, flags fly in the backfield across the 10, up to the 8-yard line. Soto fighting forward for the... Two yards. <laughs> so on the fourth down call, the illegal motion going against Derby and they give up the ball and loss of downs. So a timeout taken by Derby to uh, kind of regroup, maybe get uh, some of the second team defensive players into the game. And... Uh, they trail now 41-7, John, with 6.50 remaining in quarter number four. We go back to that second quarter, 34 unanswered points. The blitzkrieg <laughs> of the offense for Wolcott High School, and that's maintained that 34-point lead all throughout the second half. And you look back at that first quarter where the game seemed like an evenly matched game. It was 7 nothing at the end of the first quarter. And uh, just a minute into quarter number two, it was 7-7. Seven, seven, and I thought we were in for a, a, a real battle here. But then the game was just taken over by Mike Nickel. And uh, an 80-yard touchdown run followed by a 65-yard touchdown run. He's also got a 34-yard run and a 14-yard uh, run. So it was all Mike Nickel in the second quarter with uh, – some help from Joe Lynch, who has uh, a couple touchdowns as well. And now the backup back in there, Vincent Gambino. Some quality minutes here in the second half. Fake of the handoff, reverse, sweeping up the middle. Around the end, all the way up to the 30-yard line. 20-yard run. It almost looked like a, a weave in basketball. I'll tell you, too, if, if uh, Gambino had a little more experience and read that stalk block on the outside, he could have been gone. The, the defender was looking, the offensive uh, blocker was looking to push the defender to the inside of the field. Gambino cut back that way. I think if he cut to the outside, we might have seen uh, Mr. Gambino looking for the oxygen tank on the sidelines after going <laughs> that uh, 70 yards. Well, instead of the 70, it's just <laughs> 20 up to the 30. And again, shotgun now for the... Young man, sophomore, high snap on the give. The cut across the 30 up to the 28-yard line. Nate Philippone with the call there. Spot him for the three-yard game. Sebastian Hernandez playing some defense now as well, making the tackle after the gain 530 and counting and, and we talked a little bit about the the NVL this year and Naugatuck Valley League and Sonia continues to remain a power Walcott going to go to 6-0 and 
The handoff to Philippone on the botch snap. Philippone across the 40, still on his feet. And gig tackled down inside Derby territory at the 49 yard line. How's that for a hard run? That looked like a, uh, it almost looked like a design play. Just batting the ball around the backfield, right into Philippone's hands. And, you know, he gets a lot of yards after contact. And uh, that's. That's a freshman out there getting some time here for the Wolcott Eagles, and uh, that's going to make you smile if you're Coach Jason Pace. Absolutely. <laughs> 440 and counting left to go, but, yeah, we touched on it a little bit earlier. Torrington beating Holy Cross in the last second field goal. The Torrington kicking game was non-existent against Ansonia week one when we were there. Red Raiders are killed Newsom. As staying with the ball, Gambino, and he's on the run inside the 30 at the 24-yard line. 24-yard run on the play and a first down for Walcott. And that time he had a great read on the stock block on the outside, cut to the outside, had the sidelines, and just got run down from behind. But Gambino showing that he too can uh, general this offense and move it down the field and doing some good reads on his fake handoffs and uh, pulling the ball out, keeping it himself for the uh, big game. Didn't take long for him to learn, right? Stay on the outside. That's right, <laughs> absolutely. Stay away from those big guys in the middle of the field. You're always gonna be happy when you're a running back. 340 and counting. Again, out of the gun. Man in motion, Gambino. Goes to the right and bounces forward towards the center of the field. Two yard pickup on the play up to the 28 yard line. The motion man was Keeley, the junior wide receiver. And you know, he had uh, going the that way with him, he had Philippone trailing as the pitch man. And Philippone may have had quite a bit of yardage to the outside if uh, the pitch was made by Gambino. But you know, at this point, when you get an opportunity to get on the field, if you can tuck that football under your arm and run, I don't think I would uh, make a different decision myself. <laughs> Take advantage of the opportunities. That's what Vincent Gambino has done. Hand off Philippone across the 25 to the 15, 10, 5, taken down at the 5 into the, into the, the one yard line. 22-yard pickup on the play, and another guy in that same category, like a Vincent Gambino, Nate Filippone, making the most of his opportunities. Absolutely, and when he went to the right side, he cut back to the left. I don't know if you noticed, but he took the ball and switched it from his right hand to his left, and that is just fantastic for a freshman to do that. Get the ball out of harm's way. It's not going to get popped by a helmet on a tackle put it on the rough left side of the body and protected it and scampers all the way to the one yard line. But another teaching moment right in the film room. Absolutely, you're gonna be praising Philippone about that on Monday, that's for sure. 150 and counting on the edge of the doorstep. And they'll drop it down and take a knee. So now we gotta do some math here to take a look and see, 25 second ready for play clock. So the official did not turn his head to look back. So we've got uh, one more snap take us down to about a minute. And then uh, we get another ready for play. So it may very well be that uh, Derby may get the ball back before the clock runs out. We'll see how long the, uh, the officials wait to uh, play, blow that ready for play whistle. Well, again, want to thank our entire Play on sports crew, John Marcuse soldiering on. It was a windy and rainy first half. You saw exactly what we saw, which was not a lot in that first two quarters of play. The wind and the rain cleared off. Under a minute to go, 41 to 7. Brian Byrne, an outstanding job as always, producing here in the booth. And Leo Bolo alongside. My name is John Versteeg, and the home fans can sense it. Wolcott, 31 seconds and counting from going to 6 and 0 oh here in this 2012 football season. And that'll do it. I guess the uh, the officials keep the official clock on the field, even though it's up on the board. 
officially it's down there on the field and uh, we were a little bit behind up here on the board so uh, that will do it. So the final score here at Monroe Field here on the campus of Wolcott High School. The Eagles of Wolcott 41 and the Red Raiders of Derby 7. Take a time out. We'll have some Final stats and more after this on PlayOnSports.com. Welcome back to Wolcott High School. One final time, Wolcott 41 and Derby 7, our player of the game. And with his touchdown runs, Mike Nickel, a pretty easy choice. Yeah, he absolutely was. He was well over 100 yards in his touchdown runs alone, never mind all the other carries that he had that would range anywhere from 2 or 3 up to 15 to 18. He had a tremendous game. His first touchdown was 80 yards. His Second touchdown was 65. He had one of 34 and one of 14. Bears mentioning that Joe Lynch had a tremendous game for the Wilkett Eagles as well. And uh, their defense just swarming. And a very good defense. It was a good one tonight. I want to thank all of our viewers online through the CIAC television network. Of course, playonsports.com, your complete home for high school sports coverage in Connecticut. Once again, for our cameraman, the pride of Crosby High School in Waterbury, John Marcuse, and for Brian Byrne, our producer here in the booth, Leo Bowler, my color man. My name is John Versteeg. So long for now. 41-7, to seven, your final. Tune in tomorrow, Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Play on sports.com, Glastonbury, and Southington. We hope you'll join us again for great high school sports coverage. So long from Wolcott High School in Water in Wolcott.